Well, after we get through a deluge of earnings this week, the Fed's rate decision will take a center stage next week. Our next guest says all the pieces are falling into place just the way the U.S. Federal Reserve wants it. For more, joining us now is Jack Janisiewicz, Portfolio Manager and Leap Portfolio Strategist at Natixis Investment Manager Solutions. Thanks so much for joining us this afternoon, Jack. Well, thanks for having me on again. So we, we do have a lot to look forward to over the next week, but looking ahead even further to the Fed's rate decision, um, how do you see these pieces sort of falling into place for the Fed right now? You know, it certainly seems like the Fed is going to be on hold, right? They're continuing to stress that data dependency. Um, you know, I think the rate moves that we've seen on the Treasury curve, especially in the long end of the market there, um, they're tightening financial conditions for the Fed. And we've heard repeatedly from a number of Fed governors um, over the last couple of weeks that are echoing just that theme. So market's doing some of that work for the Fed, and I certainly could see the Fed just stepping back and uh, be basically being done for good here and let the data continue to play itself out. Yeah, I saw that you noted that the market has embraced higher for longer, uh, but also now basically pricing in higher forever. So w w what does that mean from an investment perspective? Yeah, it looks a little bit tricky when we start looking out, for example, at the SOFR curve going out five years and plus. You look at uh, the OIS five year, five year forward, you know, these longer term metrics that are, you know, the, what you could consider to be the long term Fed fund expectations for the market. You know, they're remaining extremely elevated at close to four and a half percent. And, you know, for us, you know, have we seen a market shift in terms of that cyclical growth, the cyclical growth story for the longer term to justify having to have rates remaining at such a high level for such a long period of time? And, you know, we just don't think that's the case here. So when you think about that higher for longer forever thing that we were sort of just highlighting there, mm -hmm. it certainly seems maybe the market's a little bit extrapolating the current regime forward for too long and rates probably at the longer term spectrum do need to come down over time. Okay, the, the other big focus, like I mentioned, this week and a bit next week as well, is going to be tech earnings. We're uh, just a few minutes away, really, from hearing from uh, Microsoft and Alphabet. But I wonder, just big picture-wise, there has been a lot of enthusiasm around technology stocks and their involvement in artificial intelligence and all of that this year. Do you see that enthusiasm, the, you know, the catalyst for that enthusiasm to continue? You know, I think a lot of investors have treated tech as somewhat of a safe haven asset, especially with the volatility that we've been seeing more recently. It makes some sense. You know, when you start to think about the specifics around AI, maybe we did pull some of that demand forward, so to speak. So maybe we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves with regard to the AI boom that the market's sort of looking at. So, you know, listen, it's, it's certainly here to stay. I think it's a tool in our pocket that will be leveraged going forward in many different ways. But... Um, you know, to continue to see the, the type of growth that may be expected from that region of the marketplace. Uh, we might need to temper down some expectations going forward there. We've already had results from some of the big U.S. banks and financial firms. I wonder what you're thinking about when it comes to that sector uh, in this environment with those higher interest rates. Yeah, and it's not surprising some of the commentary we've been hearing, right? I mean, the reflection from the banks in terms of what their outlook is with regard to consumers and what they're seeing you know, it's been echoing some of our same thoughts here, right? The consumer is slowing, but very far from really falling off that cliff and pushing us into a recession. You know, we've also heard about the idea that excess savings have been drawn down. Some of the comments that we're hearing from the banks are, are basically saying, yeah, excess savings have been dropping, but they're certainly far from being exhausted. Hmm. You know, and so at the end of the day, it certainly feels like, you know, the consumer continues to hold up in here, being a little bit more picky, a little bit more modest. But when the consumption is 70 percent of the economy and it's still fairly resilient, yeah. um, it's really hard, I think, to push us into a recession. The last piece I would point to, too, when you look at a lot of those loan loss provisions from the big money centers, they actually started to come down this last quarter. So, right. you know, if the, a lot of these banks were really pricing in a dire outlook, I don't think we'd be seeing those loan loss provisions coming down. So those are our, some of our positive takeaways from the, from the bank earnings that we'd seen earlier. 